The last behavior we have to cover is one of the coolest, the physics behavior. The physics behavior is used to simulate real-world physics within your game. Things like gravity, collisions, rolling objects, and more can be done easily with the physics behavior. Let's take a look at how to get started using this behavior. One of the most fun behaviors to mess around with is the physics behavior. It's really easy to get an object behaving as though it has mass, is affected by gravity, and reacts when other objects collide with it, determining on their mass, speed, etc. In this layout, we've got several objects that will demonstrate the basics of the physics behavior. As it is now, we have these three shapes, as well as a floor down here. None of these objects have any behaviors applied to them yet, so if I preview the layout, they're stationary. First off, let's add the physics behavior to the box. With the box selected, click on Behaviors, and then Add New. Then scroll down to Movements, and select Physics. If we preview the layout again, the box falls off the screen. That's because physics objects are affected by gravity. We can change how fast the object falls by altering the world gravity in the event sheet which we'll take a look at how to do later. For now, let's get the floor to stop the box from falling. At first, you might think to add the solid behavior to the floor, but that wouldn't do anything. Objects with a physics behavior are unaffected by objects with a solid behavior. When using a physics object, we also have to give the floor the physics behavior. So select the floor object, click on Behaviors, and select Add New, and add the physics behavior. At this point, gravity will affect the floor, and it will fall off the screen before the box ever reaches it. What we need to do is go to the Physics Properties on the Floor object and set Immovable to Yes. The Immovable property gives an object infinite mass and will prevent it from moving. Now, if we preview the layout, the box falls and collides with this little barrier here, and the Physics object causes the box to spin as it hits the edge of this little wall. If the floor object wasn't set to immovable, when the box falls down and collides with it, the ground could move slightly. This doesn't look good when you're trying to simulate the ground under your feet. You want something that doesn't move at all, as if it had infinite mass. Now, let's try adding the physics behavior to this ball. Select the ball, click on Behaviors, select Add New, and choose Physics. If we preview it, the ball falls down and bounces a bit, but doesn't really roll. That's because, by default, a physics object's collision mask is set to use collision polygon. If we take a look at the ball's collision polygon, it does somewhat create a circle, but if we zoom in, you can see the collision polygon is currently an octagon with flat sides. That's why it doesn't roll. It behaves as though it is an octagon. To fix this, we can set Collision Mask to Circle. Now if we preview the layout, the ball falls, bounces, and rolls across its area. We can also set the Collision Mask to the bounding box of the object. So, if we give the physics behavior to this triangle, I can show you what I mean. Let's take a look at the triangle's collision polygon. It matches its shape perfectly. So if we rotate this triangle so it doesn't come down flat, and preview the layout, you can see how it behaves. It falls, balances on its point, and falls over, laying flat on its side. If we change the collision mask to bounding box, and preview the layout again, it sits flat and doesn't fall over. That's because even though this object's collision polygon is a triangle, the physics behavior is using the object's entire bounding box to calculate collisions with the object. The next property an object with the physics behavior has is prevent rotation. This is easy enough to understand. When set to yes, an object will be prevented from rotating even when the physics behavior would otherwise cause it to rotate. Take this box, for example. 
When the layout is run, the box falls, collides with the floor, and starts rotating. If I set prevent rotation to yes, watch what happens. The box lands on the edge and sits there. It doesn't rotate like it did earlier. Next, we've got density. Density is what is used to represent an object's mass. Density can be thought of as how difficult it is to move an object. An object with a higher density will be harder to move than an object with a lower density. To make it even more realistic, an object's mass is actually determined by its density multiplied by its area. That means if you've got two objects with the same density, one small and the other massive, the larger object will have a greater mass, even though the density is the same. The larger object will be harder to move, as it would be in the real world. The next property is friction. The friction property determines how quickly an object slows down while sliding against another object. This is a scale between 0 and 1, with 0 being no friction, similar to sliding on ice. 1 is maximum friction slowing the object as soon as possible. Let's take a look at that in action. I'll set the box's friction value to 1, so when it hits the ground, it won't slide at all. When I preview the layout, the box spins, hits the ground, and stops, because it has maximum friction. If I set the box's friction to 0, it collides with the floor, spins, and slides across the floor, like it was sliding on ice. Then we've got elasticity. Elasticity can be thought of as bounciness, how much the object will bounce after falling. Elasticity is also a value between 0 and 1, with 0 being no bounciness and 1 being maximum bounciness. I'll set the ball's elasticity to 0 0.7. When I preview the layout, the ball bounces. The physics in Construct 2 are implemented using the Box 2D physics engine for 2D games. When calculating all of the positions, speeds, and interactions between objects, it can take a lot of processing power and could possibly affect your game's performance. To limit the chance of your game's performance being affected, try to keep the number of physics objects under 100. Although this is not a rule, just a suggestion. If your game is intended to be played on mobile, you may want to keep it even lower, around 20 to 30 physics objects on the screen at any one time.